again, this is Sickle Yield, and today I'm here to talk to you about Marvelous Designer and Daz Studio. Marvelous Designer is a program in which you can both design and simulate clothing, which is fantastic. It is probably the best at clothing simulation that is currently available to a 3D artist. It's become something of a market standard of its type. Before I start with the sim, I would like to clear up an issue that I've heard people express concerns about. Two issues, in fact. One, the personal license of Marvelous Designer is a commercial license. All of the licenses of Marvelous Designer that you can buy are commercial licenses. You can read each license on their site for yourself, and I recommend that you do so. The personal license is for use by one person on one computer. The other two licenses are for use on more than one computer or by more than one person. Now, I don't know why they called it a personal license when every other software company, when they say personal, means non-commercial, but I'm guessing that it is a translation error because based on the text that's on their site, it looks like English might not be the first language of the person who wrote the website. So I think that that may actually just be a translation problem. Moving on to the next thing, for a long time I didn't get Marvelous Designer because I was concerned that I wouldn't be able to activate it offline because I don't connect my main computer to the internet most of the time. And at the time when I bought Marvelous Designer, I didn't actually even have a Wi-Fi stub to connect it for product activation. But you actually can activate MD offline unless you go for the subscription option. If you do the subscription, then yes, you will need a Wi-Fi stub or something to get internet on your computer so that you can continue to activate the license each month. But if you do the flat out buy option, which I believe is still $550, which is a lot, it's more than 3D Coat, it's obviously more than the free Daz Studio, but it's less than ZBrush or any other major 3D suite. At that point, you'll only have to activate it once. So, moving on to today's lesson. I have Genesis 3 Female with a character and some underwear here in Daz Studio for modesty purposes on YouTube, and I am going to animate her, export that animation to Marvelous Designer, and construct clothing that works with that animation. So I'm going to sh display my timeline at the bottom of my screen here. By default, the timeline runs from 0 to 30. I'm going to turn it up to 150 by entering the number 150 down here where it says total in the lower left hand corner. Now I'm going to add a keyframe at zero frames by hitting this little symbol that looks like a key with a plus sign on it. And I'm going to drag the yellow arrow all the way to the right to 149 here. And I'm going to select a sitting pose for Genesis 3 Female. And I'm going to add another keyframe. So now, when I drag the yellow arrow back and forth across the timeline, my character should animate from zero to the pose that I've added. There we go. And what I've just done is create a very simple animation. What I'm going to show you today will work with any animation of any length. So, now that I've got my animation, I'm going to export to Colada using File, Export, and okay, it didn't like importing her undergarments into Marvelous Designer, so I actually took those off and just gave the character a plain blue texture instead. But the important thing here is that I'm going to export my animation at frame 150 so that it will get the whole animation there, and I'm going to go to File, Export. I will give my new animation a name, Kalata Test Anim here, in whatever folder you choose for it, as long as you know where it is so you can find it again. For preset, I will choose Unity, and for morphs, I will say Combine Morphs, and then I'm going to click Accept. Now going over to Marvelous Designer, there's already an avatar here, but not the one we want. So I'm going to say File New, which will remove her garments, and Avatar, Clear All Avatars, which will remove the avatar. That's what Marvelous Designer calls the figure that you're working with. So now I'm going to say Import and Collada. And that should let me bring in my animated Genesis 3 female. I'm going to choose Lotus Avatar and 100%. If you're using an OBJ, you want to use Daz Studio Scale instead. There's the character. You can see the deformation is a bit odd because it is Collada. You can navigate around by 
right clicking and holding down the mouse you can scroll in and out with the mouse wheel and holding down the left mouse in the viewport actually doesn't really do anything but that's how we do that now I'm going to make a very simple garment first of all I'm actually just going to take two squares I'm going to click on this little polygon rectangle button up here under untitled over my screen over here on the right. This is where we assemble garments and you can see it has loaded a silhouette of the character. So I'm just going to draw a square there. There it is. Then I'm going to go up here and click on edit pattern which is this triangle made of three connected dots. And when I right click on that rectangle I should be able to copy and then paste and it creates a second one of those. And now, up here on the top left of that, there is a button that says Sync. It's these two little whirling arrows. I'm going to click on that. And now my pattern has appeared in my scene. Now this is the point where Marvelous Designer, of course, diverges far from actual sewing because you've got stiff pieces hovering in the air that you have to move around. Marvelous Designer doesn't really require you to know how to sew any more than ZBrush requires you to be able to sculpt marble. Um, because it is fundamentally a 3D program. And it will be a 3D program first. So here we are. I've maneuvered these around using the widgets. If you click on it, the widget appears. And the widget appears wherever you click. That can take some getting used to. And it will translate from whatever angle you're looking at. So you don't want to be at three quarters if you want to move an object in a straight line. I'm still something of a novice with this program, so I dearly hope that there's an easier way to do that that I'm just missing. Please comment if there is. I'm not going to do actual sewing in this case. I'm just going to do some simple pinning. So I'm going to go up here to the pins where it says edit basting tack and tack on avatar. I'm going to start with tack and this little pin appears and I'm going to click on the front and the back of the pattern pieces I've created and I'm going to connect that in a couple of places but I'm going to also tack the front and back planes here to the avatar using the tack on avatar button to ensure that it doesn't fall through her before it gets to where we want it to be and once I've got everything tacked where I want it I'm going to go to where it says avatar and choose play motion and it will say garment simulation is off. Do you want to simulate? And I will say yes. And now it's going to play Genesis 3 females animation as it does the garment simulation. You can see that I got the timing a little off on my tacking there. So one of the pins has fallen through her arm, but you can also see that it's running through a very nice drape as it plays that animation that I imported. creates these nice beautiful folds. You can actually get used to the look of these and recognize when a product has been made with this program. A lot of products in our market are because as I said Marvelous Designer is basically a market standard for cloth simulation. There's really nothing that does as well as this program at this particular thing. Now you can see one of these actually looks gray when it shouldn't because I forgot to flip the normals so I'm actually going to right click on that and this list of options appears and I'm going to choose flip normal. There we go. And that causes it to recalculate a little bit, but not much. You can also left click on the cloth while the sim is running to drag it around. If I want to try and drag it away from the fingers, the fingers are actually clipping through the leg because the Colada does not export JCMs. So there are things that are messed up here that are not messed up on the character in Daz Studio. I'm going to stop there by clicking on this down button up here on the left that turns off the sim and I can export this garment we've created as OBJ or FBX. In this case, I'm going to do OBJ. I'm just going to call that drape. These options come up and I'm going to unclick Genesis 3 female shape here so that it just exports those two front and back pieces. 
single object, weld, thin, and I'm going to leave it on unified UV coordinates because that actually causes it to export um, the pattern that we created as the UV, which can be very convenient. And I'm going to set it to centimeters DAS Studio for export purposes. And that's what I'm going to do for the moment. So then I will click OK. Then I'll go to DAS Studio here, and I'm going to import the thing that I just exported. There we go. You can see that that does not look perfect around the hand and knee area there because the collada does not preserve the joint control morphs. Because that is the case, I actually have another way of doing this, which I will now demonstrate. And I'm actually going to save my two simple squares here as a garment. So I'm going to go File, Save As, Garment, and I'm going to call it Simple Tunic. Then I'm going to create a new thing again. In this case, I'm going to open a project that I saved out as a blank, which is something else that I recommend. And in this case, what I'm going to do is drag my animation in Daz Studio back to zero. And under Genesis 3 Female here, I'm going to click on that and I'm just going to export as an OBJ. I'm going to call it G3F Base. I don't want to export as Collada. Because another thing that the program can actually do is load a changed pose as a morph target. And sometimes that's better for a given scene. So then I'm going to go out to the end of my timeline and export to G3F pose. The important thing here is not that it be at base resolution, but that it be at the same resolution in the base pose and the final pose. So now I'm going to import OBJ and that G3F base that we exported. This time I'm going to say Lotus Avatar and Centimeters Daz Studio. There we go. And there's my, there's my blank. Now this time I'm going to open garment and I told it not to load a pose and size file, but I'm going to reset the placement of those. But as you can see, it sort of retains the pins. They're a bit messed up because the back one needs to be flipped in its normals again, so I'm going to click on that and right click and choose flip normal. And my pins are still messed up, so I'm going to delete those and redo them. I don't know what caused that. There are a lot of things that I still don't understand about Marvelous Designer, and I will absolutely be the first to admit that. So I'm going to pin the front to the back pieces again. And it doesn't want to let me do that. It will let me pin it to the figure, though, which is peculiar. Maybe if I delete these pins that don't seem attached to anything. There we go. Now it's letting me pin it to itself. Go figure. Once again, I definitely don't claim to be the expert with this program, but I have gotten it to work for me, and it can be really fun to use. It can be very useful in your scenes. Okay, now I've got that pinned. And I'm going to go and make sure that I have this select move button cl clicked up here at the top. I'm going to left click to select the avatar, not the clothing. And I'm going to go to file, import OBJ. And now I'm going to import G3F pose that I exported. This time I'm going to click load as morph target. Make sure it's centimeters to studio again. And I'm going to click OK. Now. It's going to iterate between the base pose and that morph target, and it's going to do it very rapidly because this is not an animation. We do not have the same control over that. And it's also going to turn itself inside out in the process of doing that, which means that we're not going to get the same smooth fit throughout that process. It actually turned the leg inside out to rotate it back to this position. 
So if I want this to look like it fits properly, I'm going to have to repin parts of it again. And the nice thing about this is that you can pin it after you've simmed it or while you're simming it. You can, you can drag things around and not have the sim freak out on you. On, well, I don't know, on most machines. I have a reasonably powerful CPU. It's a bit outdated now. I built it, this computer a couple of years ago, so if you've got a relatively recent computer, I think you should be fine. And sometimes something like that happens, where it flies madly over to the right for reasons that I don't understand. But you're going to get that with any cloth simulation. The nice thing about Marvelous Designer is that it is uncanny fast. And I'll just wait for that to reassume something like a position related to gravity. And I'm going to pin it back to the avatar again so that it covers her breasts completely there. Okay. Now this time you can see that we don't have odd clipping. If you feel like there is a little bit more clipping than you want and you want higher resolution, you can click on either of the two pieces and go over to simulation property and where it says particle distance, you can set that to a lower number, such as 15. And you will notice that it gets the cloth gets smoother, but the simulation goes slower. So that's an option that we always have. Now I'm going to click on the orange arrow up here to stop the sim. And I'm going to go to File, Export, OBJ. And I'm going to export the drape again. And once again, I will deselect the G3F down here from this list. I will leave it at Single Object Weld Thin. This time I'm going to select Centimeters Dev Studio. I'm leaving the Unified Unity coordinates on, and I'm just going to export. There we go. Now, when I import the drape, there should not be clipping such as we had before, because we don't have the problem of omitting JCMs like we have with the colada. And there we go. Looks nice. Of course, this isn't a real garment, so creating a real garment is the next thing that I'm going to teach you.